So recently, Crunchyroll added two movies to their site. These movies are interconnected and tell a story from parallel universes. They are To Every You I've Loved Before and To Me The One Who Loved You. What's interesting about these two movies is that the creators claim that it doesn't matter which order you watch them in. They are made in a way that depending on the order you watch them, it will greatly change the way you feel about them. I've watched both movies and I'm going to review them, tell you guys whether there's a correct order to watch them in, and finally tell you which movie of the two is better. Both of these movies focus on Koyomi and a special girl within his life. Before I start with the story summaries, I'm going to start referring to the t movie titles as blue and pink respectively, since the titles are very long and it would be annoying to repeat them constantly. Pink is to me the one who loved you, since the cover art is pink and blue is to every you I've loved before since the cover art is blue. In pink, the focus is on Koyomi and Shiori, while in blue it is Koyomi and Kazune. I ended up watching pink first, then I watched blue. Who knew that the biggest choice in Koyomi's life would be made at 7 years old? The choice involved which parent he would live with after the divorce. Surprisingly, they let a 7 year old decide which parent he would like to be raised by. In Pink, Koyomi decided to live with his father, who is a scientist at the Imaginary Science Research Institute, so he spends most of his time growing up there. He develops a friendship with a girl his age, whose mother works there as well. The girl's name is Shiori. In the blue timeline, Koyomi decides to live with his mother. He never becomes friends with Shiori, since he doesn't spend time at the research facility. As a matter of fact, up until high school, he struggles making any friends. That is until he meets Kazune. Koyomi and Shiori grow up together, both developing a crush on one another. Both assumed that they would get married, that is until a bombshell was dropped on them. Koyomi's dad and Shiori's mom are both divorced, and since they work together, they naturally became closer together, resulting in them telling their kids that they want to get married. This came as a shock to the kids who both decide to do something not only dangerous, but foolish. They decide to use a machine at their research facility, an IP capsule to parallel shift. A parallel shift occurs when the original timeline is deviated from. The further from zero you are, the greater the deviation. Your body does not shift, only your consciousness, or the term the movie likes to throw around, your imaginality. By doing so, they are trying to find a timeline where their parents never got divorced, so that Koyomi and Shiori could be together. Essentially, they are looking for that one in a billion chance to be together. Ah, foolish young love. Using experimental technology is dangerous since they don't know what they are doing and something terrible can happen. And something terrible does happen. To be fair, that experimental technology didn't even work at the time, but I'll complain about that later. The two lovebirds find the timeline they were looking for, but tragedy strikes. Shiori realizes she is about to be run over by a car, panics, and tries to parallel shift back to the current timeline. She dies when impacted by the car in that world, so her consciousness or imaginality has nowhere to return, resulting in her being brain dead in the original world. The sad thing is they didn't even need to do this. Despite it being extremely weird, it isn't illegal to marry your step sibling, since there isn't any blood relation between the two of them. Yes, I would stay away from it if that were the case, just like they tried staying away from it, but they didn't know better. These foolish kids threw away their future because they jumped the gun, resulting in a life of regret for Koyomi and the death of Shiori. Shiori is stuck in a limbo-like state, being a ghost at the intersection where the accident occurred. He's the only person who can still see Shiori at the intersection and spends time with her, often being seen with flowers for her. Throughout the movie, he never forgives himself for what happened to Shiori. Koyomi feels like he is responsible for what happened and dedicates his life to finding a way to save Shiori. So he dedicates all of his time studying for school and studying imaginary science. He has absolutely zero time for friends or leisure, oftentimes being seen working through the night. By undergoing a plethora of parallel shifts, he finds out that every timeline still results in Shiori dying. Their imaginalities are entangled within one another, and the only way to save her is if he never met her. That's how Pink Movie ends. He tells Shiori of his plan, that they will never meet, and she will be able to actually live out her life. Before this happens, they do decide to meet one time at the end of their lives, at the very same intersection. Now, the likelihood of them remembering to meet 66 years after the accident, and in a completely different timeline, is astronomically low. But they find that one timeline where it was possible, as we end up finding in the blue movie. Not only that, but you have to factor in the possibility that Koyomi or Shiori don't live that long in this different timeline. Now, since I watched Blue second, that one ends up being the results of the choices of Pink, which means he ends up living with his mother and never meeting Shiori. Some things remain the same, but there are obviously some noticeable differences. For example, he ends up having a social life in high school. 
falling in love with a rival named Kazune, the same Kazune who helped them figure out the solution at the end of Pink. This time they become friends much earlier in life. Both of them end up working at the Imaginary Science Research Institute, as they did in the Pink timeline. In this world, Kazune and Koyomi get married having a kid. This movie focuses much more on how small choices can have a massive effect on people's lives. This is shown when the child they have is killed in one of the timelines. Obviously, this has a massive effect on Kazune, specifically having that version of her parallel shift to a world where her child is still alive. She's obviously heartbroken losing her child, so she tries finding a world where her son still exists. Unfortunately for her, it's not her son, it's a different timeline. Blue is also more of a romance movie than Pink is. Now, both are romance movies, but in Pink, disaster strikes, putting the romance on hold, and having Koyomi dedicate his life to saving Shiori. It's a forbidden romance, one that can never be realized. In Blue, you get to see the romance between Koyomi and Kazune blossom. You get to see them grow old together. No matter what timeline he is in, Koyomi says he has fallen madly in love with every version of Kazune. Hence the title of Blue being, To Every You I've Loved Before. It's a pretty romantic thing to say, considering their knowledge of different timelines. Blue ends up with Shiori and Koyomi's final meeting at the end of their lives. A very touching end. Koyomi is similar in both movies, but he's also different. For example, no matter what, he enters into the field of imaginary science, proving his intelligence. In the Blue movie, he is told repeatedly that he doesn't possess a human heart, he doesn't understand how others are feeling, his emotional intelligence is extremely low. He never understands when Kazane is flirting with him or angry with him. In the Pink movie, however, at a very young age, he actually displays just how romantic he is, understanding how Shiori feels and knowing what she likes. He finds a romantic spot where he and Shiori can see a beautiful view of the night sky. They both had the same exact idea of trying to find a timeline where both of their parents never got divorced, showcasing he understands just how Shiori feels because he feels the exact same way. It's weird since that's the timeline where he lives with his busy dad. You'd think that Koyomi would be more romantic and thoughtful in the blue timeline where he lives with his mother who is nowhere near as busy as his father. I say this since women generally have a higher emotional intelligence as compared to men. I just thought this was pretty weird and worth noting. Now for the moment you have been waiting for, is there a correct order to watch the movies? As stated earlier, you can watch them in any order you wish, but there is a correct way to watch them. You should watch Pink first, then Blue. Now, why should you watch Pink first, then Blue? A focal point of both stories is Shiori. She is the main character, the one the story revolves around. Everything done in those movies is for Shiori. Pink is about her, whereas Blue is a result of the choice made in Pink. She won not only Koyomi's heart in Pink, but her story won over Kazune at the end of her lifespan. This was shown by Kazune's willingness to send Koyomi out to see Shiori at the end of Blue. Shiori doesn't actually win Koyomi's heart, since Koyomi ends up with Kazune, and she never actually does. Shiori, however, does defeat the odds, finally getting to live her life, and she gets to spend a moment both when they are very old and are about to die. Everything that happens in Blue is a result of the choice made within Pink. That choice being to never meet Shiori so that she can actually live. Pink, then Blue, is a linear story that ends with happiness, despite the two lovebirds, Shiori and Koyomi, never knowing each other or being together. Shiori gets to live a full life past the age of 14. You get a feeling of closure since Shiori gets to live on, seeing that her life was happy when asked the question. If you were to watch Blue then Pink, it's not chronological like that. Pink in that scenario would be a prequel, seeing just how the Blue timeline came to be. You are lacking critical knowledge about Shiori if you watch Blue first. The scene where Koyomi and Shiori meet at the end of Blue lacks all emotional impact if Pink isn't first. You also get a better understanding of parallel shifting, as well as all the terms used in the movies if you watch Pink first. Pink does a better job helping the viewer understand just what is going on, and explains the terms much better compared to Blue. I'm not saying that Blue does it poorly, but Pink goes a bit more in depth with those terms, specifically since most of the movie is revolving around trying to save Shiori. It definitely seems like Blue relies on the previous knowledge obtained through Pink. As a whole, I don't think the movies do a great job explaining parallel shifting. I also like to say that the movies would have been better if they were put together into one long, continuous movie, with Pink being first and then Blue following suit. It would have been around a three hour movie if, when they eliminated a bunch of stuff. Now, which movie is better? It's obviously difficult to separate the two movies since they are connected together. You don't get a true ending or understanding of the movies unless you watch both of them. With that being said, I'd say to me, The One Who Loved You is 100% better. 
aka the pink movie. It is a forbidden love story, one that can never be realized since it always results in Shiori's death. The world is against Koyomi and Shiori ever being together. Koyomi spent his entire life feeling guilty for what happened to Shiori, so he wants to do the only thing that he can, which is allow her to live her life, even though it will not be with him. Obviously that is extremely painful, but it is the right thing to do. To every you I loved before, the blue movie was okay, but it wasn't as enjoyable as pink. Kazune wasn't as enjoyable of a character as Shiori was, and the overall story, besides the ending, just wasn't as good. The ending of Blue is just the end result of Pink, so you had to watch through all of Blue to get a conclusion for Pink, and so that's why the ending was one of the best parts of the movie. Now, what do I rate the movies? I said earlier that Pink was better than Blue, so obviously that's reflected in my rating. I give Pink, or to me, the one who loved you, a 7.25 out of 10. Blue, or to every you I've loved before, I give a 6 out of 10. If you're looking for a combined rating, since both of these movies are linked together, it averages out to about 6.625 out of 10. I usually rate things by quarters, so 6, 6.25, 6.5, etc. I'll bump it up to an overall combined score of 6.75 out of 10. Are there any problems or things I just didn't like about the movies? Besides the stuff I already talked about earlier. The biggest problem with the movies is the voice acting specifically from Koyomi's voice actor. There was a lack of emotions at times felt within his voice. Now, I'm not talking about the majority of the time within the movies. In fact, I liked his monotonous and seemingly apathetic tone, but not when there were emotional scenes. There are several tear-jerking scenes where Koyomi is seen crying out, and he did not feel emotional in the slightest. It felt extremely off and didn't deliver the desired effect on the audience that it should have. I felt like the voice acting as a whole wasn't that great, but I also don't think it's as bad as some people say online. But that being said, the person who was in charge of the soundtrack needs a raise. Where Koyomi lacked emotion in his voice, the music made up for it, especially since it was needed. It was a fantastic soundtrack from start to finish that can pull those lacking emotions out from you. Next problem stems from the concept of the movies. As with any show or movie that involves parallel worlds, it's usually extremely difficult to wrap your head around it, simply because it's not something we can actually do. You are throwing a bunch of big scientific terms that seem or are made up at an audience. It's more of a science lecture than a movie, especially the blue movie. It's extremely difficult for the audience to pay attention to the movie when you constantly bombard them with these terms. The science side of the movie seems overly complicated, so people can't point out flaws or complain about certain things within the movies. They never explain the fact that Koyomi and apparently Shiori just have this magical power to shift to parallel worlds, seemingly at will. That fact is just largely brushed over. The story and explanations definitely could have been done better, resulting in a rating decrease for both movies. Another big problem I have is with the aforementioned IP capsule. You know, this giant experimental device that can parallel shift people, but it doesn't work at the beginning of Pink. I don't care about the fact that it doesn't work, but it is part of a massive project that probably cost millions of dollars. Why is the room easily accessible to kids? The kids can easily break the device, costing them tons of time and money in the process. Why isn't the room locked? If you think about it, it's a small problem, but if that room was locked, there's a chance that the kids would never try parallel shifting, keeping Shiori alive. When those scenes were shown, I had to pause the movie and gather myself. It's incredibly stupid that that room was easily accessible, and I had to mentally get over that fact. It was the only thing that I was thinking about, and I stopped reading the subtitles for a couple of minutes, making me have to rewind the movie because of the stupidity of the situation. Do I recommend watching them? I think they're solid. Don't expect them to be amazing, but do expect to be confused by the terminology used throughout the movies. Thanks for watching. What do you guys think of the movies? If you watch them yourselves, tell me in the comments below which one you think is better. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.